AC and Chairman Simplex. Address by Mr. Ehtisham Ul Haq, Managing Director, DCI. Address by Mr. Sunir Gurg, Director Technical. Address by Mr. Craig, Chairman, NASTT USA. Then address by Mr. Devarajan, Managing Director, URC Construction Limited. Followed by address by Mr. V. Ramnath, Chairman of AP RERA. We have then message by Mr. Pratap Jena, Honorable Minister Panchayati Raj and Drinking Water, Law, Housing and Urban Development, Government of Odisha. We also have a message by Mr. Naveen Patnaya, Honorable Chief Minister, Government of Odisha. We then have address of the Chief Guest, Honorable Justice Gyan Sudha Mishra, Justice Supreme Court of India, retired. We have few messages then from the delegates of this conference. And then we have vote of thanks by Dr. P. R. Swaroop, Chairman of Indian Society of Trenchless Technology and Director General of Construction Industry Development Council. Finally, we have the vote of thanks by Professor Niranjan Swaroop, Director General of Indian Society of Trenchless Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all for the validation session of the India Construction Week 2020. These online international conferences and exhibitions held over the last five days were organized jointly by Construction Industry Development Council and Indian Society for Transless Technology. I am happy to inform you that ICW 2020 had a very wide participation at national and international level. We had active support of over 40 organizations and more than 14,000 delegates. These events have generated total lecture duration aggregated to 147 hours. I am told these recordings will be available online for the next three months. The key partners of the event included both public and private organizations such as State of Goa, AP RERA, ERCON, Vibrant Goa Foundation, Consulting Engineers Association of India, Institute for Lean Construction Excellence, Purdue University of USA, International Infrastructure Solutions of USA, North American Society for Trenchless Technology of USA, Center for Underground Infrastructure Research and Education, IKT Germany, International Institute of Utility Specialty Hong Kong. I am happy to note that these 14,000 delegates were from industry, education and research institutions and a large number of students participated in it. The deliberations focused on the critical issues to chart out the course of action to be followed by the industry to come out of the current state and become vibrant. These programs were divided into two main streams. One, CIDC and associates organizations deliberated and addressed the critical issues facing the respective industry domains and paving the way for their solutions. The second, Indian Society for Transless Technology organized the No Dig India Show 2020, the flagship annual event of the society, 
ICW 2020 had several integral events ranging from conferences, live shows, interactive exhibition, live visits to projects and production facilities of exhibitors, technical training programs, and release of guidelines on technical publications, launch of training portal. The discussions included a variety of subjects, such as construction material, construction equipment, emerging technologies, trenchless technology, disaster management, insurance and banking, infrastructure and services, skills and education, tendering, arbitration and consultancy. Nordic India Show 2020 released four important manuals. The General Contract Document, Special Contract Conditions Document, Schedule of Trenchless Rates 2021, and Site Investigation Manual. I hope the deliberations and recommendations of the conference regarding the importance of good construction practices, processes, and guidelines and demonstration by the equipment manufacturers about their equipment safety, productivity, and operating procedures will help to, re to achieve quality, productivity, and safety in construction projects. I hope your participation in this conference was very productive and you enjoyed your five days of deliberations. I really thank you for your active participation and wish you luck for the future. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As all festivals comes to an end, this conference, this Gyanwal Yagya, will come to an end. Today, there will be Purnahuti or in this Janjat. This Janyagya, the main Rohit Yajman was CIDC. This conference was organized by CIDC with the help of Transverse Technology. Talking about CIDC, which was started, the sapling was planted 25 years before, this grew up under able and dynamic leadership of Dr. P. R. Saru, and translation technology grew up under leadership of Sri Niranjan Saru. Now, this organization developed into a multi dimensional, multifaceted organization. Today, it is widespread. It is having branches and centers all over the country. This was blessed by stalwarts and very knowledgeable, vulnerable Dr. Ramakrishna, Dr. Udesh Kohli, and today it is being headed by Sri Rana. I have been watching this element. Friends, talking about this conference, it was momentous. 10,000 registered. There were three halls in which parallel sessions, morning to evening, took place. In each session, more than 2,500 to 3,000 participants were present. 300, more than 300 scholars from our country as well as from abroad. They benefited us by their knowledge, by their experience, by their care. They covered more than 18 topics, different aspects of it. And friends, we learned quite a new things. I have 60 years experience in this industry. 
I learned quite a number of new things. And I was fascinated by it. Friends, we were, my uh, preference is always towards skilling and training of staff and skilling of workers. You know, there are 49 million workers in this trade and 70% of them are unskilled. Only 30% are partially skilled or fully skilled. We require nearly 40% fully skilled people. We cannot afford to have more than 30% unskilled. And balance can be semi-skilled on different aspects of construction. Similarly, our engineers and our staff should be well trained for ground operation. They should be, they should know the reality of the day. They should blend and take the leadership of the labor. For that, they have to be on same wavelength. They have to speak same language. CIDC has been making the effort in this direction. Of course, some private organizations also did put in efforts. And now, government realizing the uh, importance of skilling and training, have emphasized on it and putting in a lot of money and efforts. And so also, state governments and so many private organizations. All these efforts are to be synchronized and are rationalized. Similarly, development of new materials and new tools, we cannot always depend on outsiders. We cannot always import it. So we have to do our own r &D. And this effort also has to go on. During the course of this conference, we saw so many new products, new techniques, new tools, new machineries. This has, this has to be further taken forward and efforts are to be made to synchronize the efforts of all the people in the country. Because by synchronized efforts, we get better dividend than separate, separate efforts. It will be a pleasure for all of us in CIDC to work for this aspect of service to this construction industry. Friends, this conference was blessed by His Excellency, Governor of Orissa, His Excellency, Governor of Goa, as well as we were ably supported and encouraged by government of Orissa as well as government of Goa. We were also encouraged and supported by our various patrons, we are very thankful to all of them. We are very obliged to them. We are very thankful to all the parties, to all the people who put in efforts, particularly the team of CIDC. They put in Herculean effort to make this conference successful. And that too in this corona period. So also the team of Dr. Ranjal Saru. We are thankful to all of them. We are thankful to media people. We are thankful to IT people who made this conference possible and successful. And most of, most important, we are thankful to you. It is you made it, made it possible. Without you, we couldn't have done anything. Friends, thank you very much. Friends, there is a demand that we hold such conferences regularly. People are so enthusiastic. Because such conferences do bring us together. And when we come together, we can synchronize our efforts. India can be made a great nation, a vibrant nation, parallel and shoulder to shoulder with all other developments. Surely, we will put in our efforts. So, thank you very much. At the end, I pray to God 
in this corona period particularly, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kachid Dukhavu. Thank you, friends. Namaskar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It has been my privilege to remain associated with CIDC and INDSTT for more than a decade now. We need to appreciate the efforts made by the team CIDC and INDSTT to remain innovative, agile and relentless in their effort for promotion of construction industry in general and trenches technologies in particular, even in these unprecedented and challenging times. The digital trade show we are all part of today is just one example of their effort to keep the interest and issues of construction industries at the forefront. The COVID-19 has created existential crisis and forced us to bring difficult changes in our lives. Devastated the economy. India is officially in recession now. However, silver lining is just on the horizon. Economy is turning on positive growth rate. Many vaccines are on the horizon. Infrastructure projects have started. Liquidity crunch in the industry is slowly getting relieved. The overall project pipeline is huge. City gas distribution networks has just started taking shape in more than 100 cities across India. Road and bridge projects are humming and many more infrastructure projects are being announced. I conclude this short speech with a conviction that road to economic recovery is through infrastructure development projects and industry remains committed to deliver the same. Thank you. Hello, I am Sunir Gar, Director Technical in Gypsum Structural India Private Limited. I am very glad to see that even in this pandemic times, we have been able to safely continue with the tradition of annual conference and show by making some innovative changes in how we display stands, give presentations and interact with visitors. This show was even more important for our trenches industry in these times to show potential customers and stakeholders that projects are again pro progressing at normal pre-COVID levels after a brief hiatus and how technical innovations in trenchless field have gained momentum with more people and experts willing to collaborate with each other globally over various online tools. With that note, I thank all the participants. I have been told there are more than 14,000, which would be a record, who have come and shared their experiences and learned about the latest innovations in the field from the presenters and exhibitors. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Nodig India Show 2020. On behalf of North American Society of Trenchless Technology, I'm honored to speak with you and to have contributed on the International Steering Committee for this exceptional program. My name is Craig Vandale, and I'm the General Manager of Alternate Delivery and Business Development for Michaels Corporation's Trenchless Division. I'm also the Chairman of the Board for the North American Society for Trenchless Technology. This past February, I had the privilege of visiting India on a business trip, and during that time, I was able to take part as a guest lecturer at the India Institute of Technology. Over my time there, I was very impressed to see the number of students who attended by the level of interaction, engagement, and excitement from the students who took part. I'm very excited for India's future and with the implementation and development of trenches technology, and I look forward to watching progressive innovation strengthen India's infrastructure in the years to come. Today I'd like to talk to you about trenchless technology and NASTT's role in promoting and supporting the trenchless industry as well as how we can work together to improve our infrastructure here in North America and internationally. Trenchless technology is a progressive engineering process for the installation, replacement, or renewal of underground utilities with no or minimal excavation and surface disruptions, all while limiting social impacts to the public. These innovative methods have been utilized successfully for all underground utilities, including water mains, storm and sanitary sewers, gas mains, electrical and fiber optic conduits. 
When utilized in urban areas, substantial benefits are realized, including dramatically reducing disruption to vehicle traffic, pedestrian traffic, business activities, residential areas, and environmentally sensitive areas. In most cases, trenches techniques will demonstrate significant cost savings and benefits for local government, municipalities, and utility owners over traditional open trench methods. Recent advancements in robotics have allowed trenchless technologies to offer never before available pipe condition diagnostics, thus providing utility owners tools to more accurately identify and classify infrastructure priorities. NEST is a society of individuals, public organizations, and private companies with strong beliefs in the practical, social, and environmental benefit of trenchless technology. Founded in 1990, NASTT represents more than 2,000 members throughout the United States and Canada who all believe in more responsible ways to manage, rehabilitate, or replace our aging underground infrastructure. NASTT's mission is to advance trenches technology and to promote its benefits to the public and the environment by increasing awareness and knowledge through the technical information, dissemination, research and development, education, and training. We strive to provide a representative voice for all sectors of the trenchless technology industry. For over 30 years, the all-volunteer members of NASTT have presented non-commercial, informative seminars, education, and training about trenchless technologies. Our vision is to be the premier resource for knowledge, education, and training in trenchless technology. And our mission is to continuously improve infrastructure management through trenchless technology. As NASTT continues to grow and take on new challenges, it's important for our non-for-profit society to serve and support our diverse industry partners, both in North America and globally. We proudly represent municipalities, public utilities, consultants, engineers, manufacturers, suppliers, trenchless contractors, and academia. We support 11 regional chapters, soon to be 12 with our newest addition in Mexico, and 19 student chapters at universities throughout North America. We make every effort to reach out to all these groups and share with our communities the latest industry trenchless advancements and our continuing education opportunities. The many benefits of trenchless solutions for today's infrastructure challenges will always be our strengths. NASTT offers multiple in-depth, high-quality courses each year in cities throughout North America, covering targeted trenchless topics like cured-in-place pipe, otherwise known as CIPP, horizontal directional drilling, otherwise known as HDD, gas distribution, municipal sewer grouting, pipe bursting, laterals, and new installation methods. You will find that our course content is of the highest quality as the material is thoroughly peer-reviewed for consensus-based information and non-commercialism. We continually strive to improve the quality of the entire educational experience for our attendees through course evaluations and feedback. In August of this year, we rolled out our virtual component to our good practices courses in response to the COVID crisis. We are offering our entire suite of courses in a virtual environment to continue to meet our mission and vision. I feel this is an excellent way for NASTT to partner with India Society and its members by offering these courses. In the coming weeks, we'll be working with the India Society to promote and offer these virtual trainings. NASTT currently has 12 editions of our Good Practices Guideline books. These books serve as companions to our esteemed Good Practices courses and are a valuable resource as standalone references for a wide variety of trenchless technologies. All NASTT publications are peer reviewed by volunteer industry professionals to ensure that they offer generic and non commercial information. These books are funded by NASTT as part of our educational outreach program. Since 1990, the all volunteer members of NASTT have presented on non commercial information about alternative engineering methods to North American communities. Our latest offerings published in 2020 include pipe jacking good practices guidelines pipe ramming good practice guidelines, and subsurface investigations good practices guidelines. Another way NASTT can partner with the India Society is by offering our books at a reduced price to all India delegates and attendees. As part of our commitment to reaching all the audiences in not only North America, but throughout the world, we have translated several of our publications, our CIPP good practices guidelines, 
was translated into Spanish in 2017. Our introduction to trenches technology, rehabilitation and new installation books have both been translated into French. Our CIPP book was also translated into Portuguese by the Brazilian Society. We look forward to working with the additional sister societies within the ISTT family on translations and collaborations in the near future. NESTT also offers the world's largest online resource for technical information on trenchless technology. Every paper presented at the NODIG show since 1991 has been archived and is available via search terms in our library. We have over 2,000 papers on every conceivable topic related to our trenchless technologies. Our library is something we are extremely proud of and feel it's an excellent resource that can be used to promote trenchless technology, innovation, and share ideas. For a limited time, NASTT will offer the India Society and its members an NASTT 2021 membership for $100, US allowing you to access this impressive library and utilize this knowledge. The NASCT NODIG show is the largest trenchless technology conference in the world, where professionals attend to learn new techniques that will save money and improve infrastructure. The show offers six tracks and 160 peer-reviewed non-commercial presentations, including case studies detailing environmentally friendly trenchless solutions and cost savings opportunities for municipalities and utilities. In 2019, there were over 200 exhibiting companies on the show floor with multiple networking events. Attendees can spend quality time with current colleagues, customers, and grow their connections. I would like to personally invite you, the participants of this show, to join the India delegation at the 2021 NODIG show. NESTT will be working with the India Society to develop a special package for this event. For 2021, we are excited to bring an in-person event next spring to Orlando, Florida in the United States. Things may look a bit different, the 21 show, but the top-notch technical training and networking you expect from our conference will not change. We understand how important the in-person conversations are for sharing ideas, networking, and growing our industry. With that in mind, we plan to deliver a worthwhile event in a safe manner while still bringing you the value you expect from the NASTT No Dig Show. We are also currently working on an on-demand online technical program component to reach even more professionals in our industry during these uncertain times. Lastly, NASTT also has initiated the No Dig North Conference. In 2019, the Canadian chapters of NASTT joined forces in Calgary, Alberta, Canada to put on the inaugural No Dig North Conference. The event was more successful than we could have ever imagined with over 600 attendees. The need for an expanded regional trenchless conference in Canada is clear, and we are looking forward to returning in November of 21. The conference will be held in Vancouver, British Columbia, and we are currently accepting abstracts for the technical program, and we hope to see you there. In closing, I want to thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the 2020 Noting India show. I look forward to meeting and collaborating with you all in the years to come. From all of us at NASTT, have a fantastic day. Greetings to all respected chairman of CADC, respected mentor of CADC, honorable minister from Odisha government and the honorable chief minister of Odisha government and my dear friend, Dr. Swaroop. It's really a pleasure to be part of this validatory function. After the completion of four hectic days of 385 speakers and quite a lot of members who had attended and got the benefit. I am here to represent the board of directors of ILCE the Institute of Lean Construction Excellence, which was established over the last 10 years and it's doing its best to promote the lean practice for one single motto of transforming the construction industry of India and prove to the world that Indian construction industry is in no way inferior to anybody in the world. Saying that, how are we going to achieve it? A lot of mechanization has happened. Now slowly the digitization also is happening. Large volume projects are also coming up. 
but there is going to be even though we are a populous country there is going to be a huge demand and shortage of labor force for executing all these wonderful projects in our study in the lean practice it is proved again and again that in the construction industry there is a considerable wastage of manpower to the tune of 35 to 40 percent very purpose of lean construction practice is to reduce this wastage by applying the wonderful six or seven important tools like value stream mapping loss planner system and other tools it has been very well explained by the experts and all the board members on the 2nd of december and it is good that CIDC is going to upload it in its website for the benefit of the practitioners when i said about last planner system or value stream mapping based on your nature of the project when you had won the contract and when you are preparing your zero cost budget or initial budget you please go through and understand how this lean tools can help you to expedite the process of completion as well as reduce the resources it's not only the labor you can very well reduce the usage of your equipment usage of your engineering manpower and other related resources and the programming can always done with the lean tools in place please expose your team members there are wonderful uh, material available like games and other things which can be used to, to train your people for the betterment of the completion of the project on time when a project is completed on time then you will make your profit so once again i am reiterating ilc is very much available for the benefit of every practitioner in the construction industry iit chennai iit mumbai nikmar kind of institutions are well connected with this process so make use of this and i thank cidc for the wonderful platform which has been given to ilce for exhibiting its usefulness to the construction friends i wish and i request all the participants the nation builders and every one of you to learn understand and connect with the ilce program and ilce organization and get transform thank you very much good evening to you i wish to thank all the delegates the participants and the various industry associations and the industries that have participated in the india construction week and having made it a grand success on behalf of andhra pradesh real estate regulatory authority i wish to thank all the participants for the real estate segment of the construction week uh, as a closing note i would like to convey a few points to the industry related to the real estate real estate is the backbone of the indian economy and at andhra pradesh real estate regulatory authority we have been striving to introduce more standardized methods of construction trying to build quality of materials into the new projects and ensuring that the quality of workmanship is to international standards i think all of us understand the importance of using modern technologies and standard products to improve the quality of our buildings and make sure that the life of the building is well protected and the buyers are comfortable and happy to possess buildings constructed by the real estate sector of india it is very important to note that we have to adopt new modern technologies more so with the covid having impacted our businesses by introducing more and more 
uh, <coughs> efficient technologies it is possible to complete the projects with higher quality at lesser time so i wish to convey to all the participants and members and the industry that we have to now strive hard to improve the quality of the technologies which we are using go for more of p cost and more of uh, elements which are designed for easier use in order that we build better quality buildings and reach the international standards thank you once again for attending this construction week and making it a grand success now i'll recite the message from shri pratap jena minister panchayati raj and drinking water law housing and urban development odisha honorable minister says it gives me immense pleasure that construction industry development council new delhi is going to organize an online international webinar on the occasion of india construction week 2020 on the theme reviving construction industry in post covid world from 1st to 5th december 2020 objectives of the event are to provide latest information knowledge base and guidelines for implementation and meeting the exigencies posed in post covid scenario as construction industry has major contribution towards the employment generation and availability of labor and technology resources we have to give attention to various aspects of livelihood along with economic prospects i hope eminent construction engineers development experts representatives of national and international forums other stakeholders from infrastructure industry will provide meaningful information and suggestions to overcome this difficult time i appreciate the endeavor and congratulate the participants in the webinar and with the webinar i wish the webinar a grand success that's the encouraging message from shri pratap jena and we thank him for that i will now recite the message from honorable chief minister of odisha mr navin patnaik honorable minister says i am glad to know that the construction industry development council new delhi is organizing an international webinar on reviving construction industry in post covid world on the occasion of india construction week 2020 during december 1st to 5th 2020 construction industry is a major contributor to indian economy and also one of the largest providers of jobs i appreciate the efforts of the cidc to revive the construction industry during and after the covid situation extraordinary situation demands ground breaking and intelligent response with active involvement all the stakeholders i believe the industry will definitely bounce back within a short period i wish the endeavor all success and we thank honorable chief minister for this encouraging words and message a big hello to all the distinguished participants and the devoted listeners in this very important event online event rather organized by the <coughs> construction industry development council jointly with indian society for trenchless technology supported by the associated organizations in india and abroad let me first of all compliment you and rip and uh, state that it's a very commendable initiative taken by this industry especially in this time of pande- pandemic when we are all struggling to revive the economy all the world over i feel immensely pleased to associate myself in this event by uh, uh, by the invitation to participate in the validatory session of this very uh, far as i am concerned my association with the construction industry has been through arbitrations conciliations and mediations which i have been doing after my uh, 
uh, after demitting office as a judge of the Supreme Court. And I have noticed that the that the uh, that the disputes in between the parties, which comes up for a for a lengthy litigation between the uh, between the uh, contractors and the main players, takes a long time in spite of a alternative dispute resolution forum. In that experience, I have noticed that very many litigations perhaps can be restricted initially through mediations and conciliation, which, which I don't think is taken very seriously uh, by the affected parties. And there is a tendency to ultimately lead uh, to litigations where the matter is decided by the arbitrators, which goes up in appeals and further appeals. In my understanding, if an honest intention and initiative is taken by the parties, maybe the duration of litigation can be minimized and reduced to the minimum level, but honesty of purpose is the main, main, uh, uh, main ingredient which gets sacrificed. In my experience, I noticed that uh, we are all aware that there are two parties, one who awards the contract, generally there are two parties who awards the contract and the other who has to take the payments. Any party who has to make the payment, uh, make the payment generally has a tendency to drag the litigation and for some reason or the other, it uh, the litigation, even in you know alternative dispute resolution forum, it gets dragged because anyone who has to pay will will like to drag it, and the other who has to receive it is very anxious because his uh, 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 his resources gets limited due to the litigation. I would say that in the pandemic, and not merely in the pandemic, the honesty of purpose by both the sides have to be very seriously deliberated because I've always felt that, you know, when an ordinary litigant is before the court, we generally feel, why do they fight? Because they don't understand what to what extent they should yield. So. The bottom line in my understanding should be the parties should know where to yield and to what extent to uh, to yield. And uh, uh, since we are in the uh, in the summing up session as a relative session, I don't think uh, it is appropriate for me to uh, to delve deep into this. But I would say that. Uh, even when the award is uh, uh, award is uh, passed, then uh, both parties can have have this access, can have the access of the award, and thereafter also mediation and conciliation process is possible. What I what I mean to emphasize is that both the parties can come to the negotiating table and can know the views of the arbitrators or uh, uh, like uh, to what extent uh, they have a chance and they can also see the reasoning. So when coming from the experts and disclosing that bind that look here, here is your limitation and you ought to yield, maybe uh, one mediation is before the litigation and the other is after the mediation, uh, sorry, after the uh, award is passed. This is, this is slightly, uh, in my understanding, this is slightly unusual. This is not the practice right now. We all hear the matters, close the box, and then the award is passed. So uh, I would suggest that maybe we can think on these lines 
that when the matter gets deliberated thrashed out thereafter also maybe a stage can be introduced for minimizing the litigation so what i'm trying to emphasize and focus through this platform is that the uh, uh, the technical aspects the uh, the mm, uh, the two players the uh, the one who awards the contract whether it is public sector undertaking the government organization corporates and the other is who execute the contract through a mediator or by themselves that is one aspect and i i i i, I would confess my limitation that in so far as the technical aspects are concerned you are uh, you are more knowledgeable in so far as the te technology is concerned and that is why i am trying to uh, to uh, uh, to express my view as to how the litigation can be minimized in a, uh, uh, the uh, maybe uh, some other time you can explore these aspects the next thing that i wanted to focus and emphasize was that the ethics which we generally uh, uh, generally ignored ignored Uh, uh is that honesty of purpose and honest intentions are very very important we, which we generally ignore uh, uh, if the builder you know if the construction in builder when i say not merely the uh, builder of residential uh, um, uh, premises but also um, in every aspect of the construction uh, if you have the intention to do to deliver the project within the time then the uh, intention should also be to clear the invoices and the bills within the time and in that if the honesty is resorted to by both the players maybe uh, maybe the litigation aspect can be minimized of course uh, i i i think uh, uh, knowing the human mind Uh, it's easier said than done but if if we keep on focusing on these aspects maybe maybe little bit improvement can be uh, we can do uh, in improving the uh, the uh, the resolution of disputes uh, the uh, like you know for an ordinary you know uh, uh, ordinary investor in if they do it in a residential premises and they do they do not get their do, do do not get delivery of possession within the time and in spite of the uh, clauses in the agreement that they will be compensated by you know uh, 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 adequately by the terms and conditions for the for the delay it gets enmeshed into the, into the litigation so the entire scenario which i have noticed is ultimately things very very uh, uh, very frequently gets enmeshed into the litigation and when there is no litigation litigation is also created so we have to make an endeavor that as a matured uh, uh, matured players we must try to reduce this as much as possible and yield to the extent which you think is reasonable on your part the focus should be on the reasonableness of the active players uh, i think uh, uh, for summing up uh, i do not know because i did not have the occasion to participate in all the sessions but uh, 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 but i guess uh, i do not know what are the uh, 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 theme of the you know subjects in each conferences have been dealt with in absentia these are my uh, random views on the conference and i would not say more except wishing all the best to the players uh, to the participants in contributing not merely in the pa pandemic and i'm hopeful the pandemic would be over we would we would reduce to the normal times if we succeed in uh, uh, in overcoming this demon of covid by 
by locking them into the uh, 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 into the uh, uh, in Welcome to everybody to this valedictory function of ICW 2020 and my special warm welcome to Honorable Justice Gyan Sudha Mishra, uh, retired Justice of Supreme Court of India, Dr. P. S. Rana, Chairman CIDC, my other friends who are here and a very very big thank you to the state governments of Odisha and Goa where Honorable Governor himself has conveyed his message, Honorable Chief Minister of Odisha and Goa, they have conveyed their best messages and of course Honorable Minister of Urban Development or Government of Odisha, they have all conveyed their best messages. Thank you all. I also thank almost 340 speakers who took their precious time to send us wonderful passages which were displayed during the last five days. Over 10,000 participants, so many sponsors. I must tell you that this was the biggest event that we have ever had. And this is the success which we are enjoying now. The purpose of this particular event, as all of you are aware, was to find a blueprint and I must tell you that this journey is just beginning and it is not the end of it. We are going to be setting up now a working group comprising of all the honorable members of the steering group and we should be basically elaborating on the recommendations, compendiums of which will be prepared and the work has already begun on that. They will be sent to various mm -hmm. stakeholders that basically involves the state governments, the union government, the industry and the experts for that matter and anybody and everybody but especially to my colleges, institutions and the young engineers who are going to be taking over the construction and infrastructure industry from now. We have been putting focus on many of the emerging technologies, the new areas and especially I have to mention that the technology which is known as trenchless technology and so very vital for the subsurface infrastructure. We have had overwhelming support from almost all the nations and experts from everywhere. They came out and they spoke about it. I will also talk about the lean construction techniques which are going to be economizing the functioning of construction industry. And these are all the things that we deliberated. And the intent was simple as to how to make our industry far more capable, far more competent and especially in these difficult times, how to make the operations far more economical. Construction workers are our backbone. Almost 4 crore construction workers, they are engaged with the construction industry in India. We have to make sure that they should be trained, they should be tested and certified and I am so happy to inform you that utilizing the e-techniques, we have been continuing with the work as a matter of fact, on pro bono basis, many of the construction workers have been coming and getting themselves tested for the skills that they have acquired, which is a very satisfying science. My appeal to all the construction companies in the country is to ensure that a large number of the construction workers and supervisors including the engineers, they are put on the path of education so that they basically grow, they work out the kind of things which are going to make our functioning so much efficient and CIDC definitely is going to be helping out on such initiatives. Let us look at the emerging technologies that have come out now and kind of wonderful work which many of our youngsters are uh, talking about and the work that they have done. Should we not put them in adoption and that is something which is going to be the essence and purpose of this particular deliberation that we have had. We will talk about the financial issues, especially the NPAs that are troubling the banks and everybody at large for that matter. We are in dialogue with Indian Bank Association and new compendiums are being prepared which are being sent to revise the procurement processes. 
disputes they have been a bane to our industry and plethora of disputes are existing as of today. It is infectious and I am so happy that Justice Mishra is with us today and uh, we are now working on online dispute resolution techniques which are going to be useful for everyone and going to be far more economical. Under the banner of Construction Industry Arbitration Council, we shall be taking up this particular thing more vigorously. And now that we have a portal, this is going to give us a chance to really help resolve all the disputes that we can. May God help us all on these things. Let us look at the kind of professional grooming of our young persons and Engineering Council of India has been working uh, relentlessly to make sure that our engineers are imparted continuous education. So my appeal to all the colleges and the students is, please come and try to learn new techniques, make the functioning of the industry far more effective and uh, definite. And that is where basically we'll all work together and try to make sure that all these things happen. The roles and responsibilities of engineers that also needs a redefinition now. And this is where ECI is going to play an important role. Many of the students who have participated in this particular event, and all I can tell you that over a number of almost 11,000 participants who came in and joined this particular event, the larger number was from the institutes, their young faculty members and we also are going to be initiating the programs so that the institutes can turn themselves into resource centers and the young faculty members are able to get the kind of inputs which are going to help the young students to understand what exactly industry requires. I have to thank various SPIUs of various states who had been providing the funding support to many of the institutions who have come together with us, signed MOUs with us and we are going to be working very closely with them so that the meaningful education is imparted which can lead to the employment. Abolition of unemployment is something which is our aim and it is only the construction industry which is going to be helping out in this particular direction. Wherever there has been a pandemic or some kind of a natural calamity, it's always the construction industry which has stood and basically, you know, have proven perfect as far as the test of time is concerned. I would say things come to an end, but now this is the time to think that this is the beginning of the good times when we are all going to be working. I thank Lean Construction Institute who are going to be telling everybody as to how to economize and how to make the whole thing very efficient. There are several more things that have been deliberated and discussed and possibly within the limited time that I have with me. It is not possible, but all I can tell you that we at CIDC and Indian Society for Tentless Technology are committed to the excellence. And therefore, my request and suggestion and recommendation to all of you is that participate in the Vishwakarma Awards that are going to be held on 7th of March of 2021. That is the annual day of CIDC and I am so proud and happy to inform you that with the blessings of our founding fathers led by Dr. G. V. Ramakrishna who is Padm Bhushan uh, by Government of India, uh, we have been able to complete 25 years and this all has been because of the blessings of elders like Dr. G. V. Ramakrishna, Dr. Udesh Kohli and many more and some of them are sitting right here in this assembly like Dr. B. D. Mudra. We are so obliged to all of you. I thank all the sponsoring organizations but last but not the least, I must thank all my staff members who are basically standing with me like a rock and who had been working relentlessly. I am so proud of you boys and girls. Thank you so much. And with that, I bid you a good night. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Good evening. It's my honored privilege to deliver the vote of thanks at the conclusion of 
hugely successful Nordic India Show 2020 Digital and India Construction Week 2020. The show has been such a big success as we have got the support of about 14,000 registration or registrants who registered for the event. It's a very, very big number post pandemic. And in a, in a world infested with COVID, if you are able to do this, it gives me enough hope that yes, the industry is alive and kicking. Soon we will be back in the full force. So thank you all the delegates or registered participants. Thank you very much. The next thank which I would like to offer is to Dr. Mo Najafi. Professor Najafi is the director Curie and professor University of Texas at Arlington and a very, very dear friend. Mo and myself have worked on it several projects and training programs and have been able to deliver successfully many, many things. Thank you, Mo. The next one to, to be thanked is Tom Isley. Professor Tom Isley is from Purdue University. And as far as I understand, he is one of the oldest trenchless technologists who has taught all of us. I also am fortunate to have been taught by Dr. Isley while he was at Louisiana Tech University. Thank you, Tom, and thank you for delivering the keynote address. We are sure that we would be quite keen to work with all the institutions or organizations that you are supporting today. Thanks, Tom. The next gentleman I would like to thank is Mr. Craig Wandale, Chairman of North American Society for Digital Technology. Craig is the one who had full belief or faith in us when we started our show, or the planning of the show, that time, Craig came, <clears throat> came forward and indicated or informed me that you don't worry, you plan your show, whatever best support is possible, I will give it to you. And true to his word, Craig got the NAST team workshop structured, also got the networking movement with the different Trendless technology societies of the world. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, a ton. The next gentleman I would like to thank is Dr. King Wong, Executive President, International Institute of Utility Specialists, <coughs> Hong Kong. Dr. King Wong and myself are again working for a very long time together, and we are trying to create a cadre of utility specialists in India. I'm sure with this presentation, he has conveyed the message and stakeholders of Indian rental sector must have taken the note. This is a very, very important cadre of professionals now needed because our urban requirements are growing. Post COVID, the things are becoming more complex and we need specialists over there. Thanks, King. The next I would like to thank is the IKT team. IKT team has been like my home or my family. IKT team is headed by Mr. Roland Vani as managing director, Dr. Bird Bossler as a technical director, Ian Nair Smith, who's the project manager. All of them put together with more colleagues were able to create a very, very informative and educative IKT workshop. All those topics which have been dealt are needed badly in India. And I'm sure the people would be working with me so that we can go and work with IKT and develop the required proficiencies in India, required testing systems in India and get the things tested in Germany in IKT. The next team I would like to thank is the NASTT team, which includes Mr. Matthew Izard, Mr. Alan Goodman, and Mr. Daniel Bonadana. All three of them have worked tirelessly to create the complete NASTT workshop, which has given many, many path breaking and frontier technology or informations to the uh, stakeholders of Indian Trenches Technology Society. I'm sure that this particular workshop would basically provide inputs to everybody for using those techniques and technologies in their works like artificial intelligence or 
pipeline, replacement techniques and all. Thank you NASGTG. The next gentleman I would like to thank is Dr. Sanjay Rana. Dr. Rana has been working with us again for a very, very long time. And together we have created the stream of subsurface security engineering in INDSTD portfolio. We have also been able to create a cadre of SUE engineers who are trained and authorized to uh, approve the subsurface utility maps or SUMs. Thank you, Dr. Rana. I'm sure that in the coming times, we will be training more of SUA engineers this way and safeguarding our utilities, which are getting damaged. The next gentleman I would like to thank is Mr. Ahtar Shamul Haq, who is our governing council member and has been working tirelessly to support the society in a very, very big manner. Mr. Haq, in spite of his busy schedule, worked with, with us and created many things for this show. Thank you, Mr. Haq. The next gentleman I would like to thank is Mr. Sunir Kar. Mr. Gurk has again a very, very uh, busy, after, even with a very, very busy schedule, has been successful in creating a special address for everybody. The last gentleman I would like to thank is Mr. Jaman, with whom we are working to create the Confined Space Entry Program. Confined Space Entry is one of the very, very important uh, stream of subsurface construction, which saves people from a real death because people are getting inside the buried pipelines and inhaling the gases and they are dying. It is, it is imperative that this kind of training program should run in India. And Mr. Jaman has, has been working in that and created a program. We intend to run that program jointly with Mr. Jaman. Thank you, Mr. Jaman. No show is possible without financial and moral support. And in this show, we had principal partner, uh, <coughs> Mr. Scamtron. We had main partner, DCI. We had associate partners, Gypsum and Alar Sharma. All of them have been extremely helpful and with their support, we could create the whole program. Next is the IT team. This event was completely hosted on the portal and <clears throat> the program functioned without much of glitches. Such a huge program where you had four tracks, some 146 hours of video presentations, interactions, exhibition stalls, everything. All those function very well. And therefore, thank you, Access InfoWays, and thank you, Vipin. Last but not the least, my team at CIDC and IMDSGT, we could create a program which is for <clears throat> having 14,000 registered delegates and visitors. We could create a program where people from every walk of the life came to present. We could create a program where almost most of the nations were, uh, were present through the representatives of their presenters. It is a huge task which they could accomplish. Based on that, the event was went successfully and we could conclude the program in such a big way. The show was not possible without any of all these people. So my heartfelt thanks to everybody. Thank you very much. God 